Who in your own life do you consider a trusted advisor? And this could be for personal matters, it could be for professional and business matters. But think about the characteristics that make this a trusted relationship for you. Pause the video, make a note of these characteristics, and when we come back on the other side, let's look at what David Meister and his co-authors have to say about the topic of trust. Meister is one of the most recognized authors in the field of professional services. And this is what he had to say about trust. He and his co-authors have studied what it takes to become a trusted advisor, and they've come up with an equation for trust. And it goes like this. Trustworthiness, they say, is a function of four components. Professional services firms typically demonstrate their credibility by talking about their capabilities, their methodologies, the case studies, the testimonials from other satisfied customers, and so on. While all of this stacks up against the rational aspects of credibility, the customer is also alongside evaluating the advisor on the emotional aspects. Is the advisor perceived as merely believable or is perceived as being honest? And this distinction becomes even more pronounced as they start to work together. The question on the customer's mind is not merely, are you telling me the truth? But the question is, are you telling me the complete truth? As in, are you covering all dimensions of the problem that you're solving for me and that I need to hear? Customers think of businesses as reliable when they see them delivering on promises repeatedly. Ultimately, the trust in a brand comes from the fact that the brand makes promises and has a record of keeping them consistently. Now, I say that the investment that a company makes in CRM systems and processes are all adding up to this aspect of the trust equation. How quickly, how reliably are you resolving and addressing issues, complaints, inquiries on across various channels from your customers and prospective customers? Your responsiveness and transparency in interactions are all adding up to the reliability score in the customer's mind about your business. To appreciate what Meister is getting at when he calls out intimacy as one of the trust factors, go back to the question that we started with. When you think about your own trusted advisors, you realize there is an emotional honesty in your interactions with them. You share opinions freely, even on difficult topics, and there's a willingness on both sides to expand the conversation and go into what could go wrong with an initiative and, and a willingness to peel the layers of a problem and to get to the root of it. And sometimes this could even mean surfacing your own insecurities, your own fears, but all of this is done in an, in an atmosphere of very assured mutual respect and boundaries in place. On the flip side of all the factors that we have covered thus far is self-orientation. Self-orientation, very simply, is each time the advisor says and does that is focused on themselves and is not serving the client's interests. Every time the advisor rushes to a solution without patiently hearing out the customer or is asking clever, closed-ended questions to steer the conversation, that's self-orientation at play. My own take, these lessons are as important to the client as it is to the advisor. An interesting question that comes up when you're studying the trust equation then is, does trust always necessarily take time? Of course, the reliability, credibility, all of these are not established overnight. Now, having said that, are there things that one can do right from the early meetings with a customer and even before then to start establishing trust? The best advice here is pay attention to the small stuff. For instance, when you're asked a question that you do not know the answer to, say so quickly and directly. Keep in mind all the meetings that you facilitate, all the artifacts that you share, how you scope out a new initiative with a customer. These are all precursors that tell the customer what doing business with your firm will be like. And as the old adage goes, do not be afraid to disagree without being disagreeable. Going alongside the topic of trust is visibility. Another thought leader that we follow, Philip Morgan, says that buyers in order to evaluate your trustworthiness need to see you visible in the market that you serve. Philip goes on to say that marketing is the earning of trust and visibility to your service offers and indeed your business and your thinking. Tying these thoughts together, my own take is that one needs to view marketing as an investment that you make in order to get an early start on the trust equation with your customers. Hope that was useful. Look forward to seeing you in other Varasi videos soon.